Having experienced just how slow dwarves were in my first test game of Old World, I thought it was time to put together the gyrocopter. I wasn't entirely sure if I'd commit this process to video since it is a fiendishly irritating build. Heavy metal pieces, small contact points, it has all of them. But I figured you could suffer with me, so here we are. So first step in all of this is going to be just cleaning up the various bits of moulding and so on from the edge of the metal things. So I've got a small file for that and some clippers. You don't really want to be using a nice pair of clippers with metal figures because it will blunt the ends eventually. So I'm just going to trim off any kind of small parts like this on this rotor and then file off all the edges till they're smooth. And I'll be back once all the pieces are cleaned up. For my own amusement, all of the sped up sections of drilling and filing and so on are accompanied by extracts from Furt Wengler's 1953 recording of the Act III prelude to Wagner's Die Valkyra, sadly known to many only through its use in Apocalypse Now. If you get the chance, watch the whole opera, or better yet, the entire ring cycle. So here's everything laid out as it appears in this guide image from the reverse of the box. I've kind of grouped it into what I see as the main sub-assemblies. So you've got the body and skids for the gyrocopter, the rotor assembly and the pilot. The pilot I will probably leave off um, until I've painted the body because you get all sorts of weird gaps underneath this arm and the other arm and the steam gun and so on. Um, which makes it very difficult to paint this inside of the cockpit. I'm going to be starting with the body, so I've put everything else to one side for now. Since this has some fairly heavy components, I figured this would be a good place to show pinning and working with that type of old metal model, because it's another one of the major barriers of entry to the old world, I think. Uh, for people who aren't as familiar with working with these kits, if you just use superglue on its own, especially with a component like this front part of the body which is going to have all the weight of this plus the pilot and his arm and the gun being essentially suspended off this central engine component which is where the fly stand mounts to that's a lot resting on not an enormous contact area really it's only these two sides here and this lug down here which locates onto this point so having thought about this and experimented a bit I'm going to place one large pin in the centre of this lug here that locates into this groove in the body. Um, the side pieces, you do have these divots here already, but the other side of this is where the parts of the tail fin locate, and the metal there is so thin it's not really enough to give a pin that much purchase, so that's not worth it. Um, so I'm just going for a centre roll. So, we have pin vise, which is essentially just a small drill um, where the, this end rotates and you can hold that in the palm of your hand and then using this textured grip surface, rotate like that against the surface and that will drill your hole. Um, and I'm starting with a smaller drill bit. I've got two different sizes I'm using. One that is the size of the pin itself, which I'm just using a paper clip, and this first one to drill a kind of pilot hole to get it started. So I'm going to try and find the very centre of this, fairly low down. Oh, there we go. That's enough to get started, so I'm replacing this with a larger drill bit. Yeah. A typical issue we'll find with using pins on a flat surface like this where positioning is quite important is knowing where exactly to drill your corresponding hole on this side. There are various methods of doing this. You can um, use paint as a way to guide it but I found that with you know flat surfaces like this they're not flat enough to match up properly. You'll notice I, I did try matching up one of the holes for the sides before I decided that the spots were too small. Um, hence a bit of residue of red here but that ended up not working because these weren't even flat enough to leave a clear imprint of where I drilled. So, so I'm just going to use a very small bit of paper clip put into that hole and just try to imprint on the other side 
where roughly we want to drill. And you can see that's left, just with hand pressure, a mark here on the other side, which it matches to. Um, it might be too small for you to see, but there is a, an indentation there. Um, so again, swapping back to my smaller drill bit. So there we go, as if by magic the pin was just about the perfect length for this. So what I'll do is holding one end of the pin, apply some super glue to it, fix that piece in, then glue up the rest of the surface on the engine and try and align the two. Okay, so that's one component down. The rest of the body is actually fairly easier to do than that piece since there are these fairly generous um, mounting holes here in the engine piece for the tail assembly to locate into. Because these are quite thin, you'll find these are probably bent a little bit out of alignment, like you'll see they're going off to this side slightly. So I'm just going to tease them back into line with the rest of the tail. Make sure that those match and those both seem to fit now fairly well. Um, obviously you get this the right way up, you can tell because there's a again a small locating hole here for the, the top part of the tail assembly to fit into. So exactly the same as before, put super glue on those into here. Um, the nozzle component on this is completely stopped working. So I'm just using a bit of an old paper clip again to act as a sort of brush and apply these. So a generous amount of the gel super glue onto the ends of each of these. Now for this part, this mounts in a little small indentation up here, this part into the rest of the tail and then that part between the two side struts there. With all of this it is of course very important to dry fit everything first and make sure that everything lines up because you may find once you've just applied loads of glue there is actually a bit of um, mold line or something like that left on the piece which you'll need to trim or file away and then when you put your piece down you'll find that it glues itself to the mat speaking from personal experience so. there you go so those are ready to go into here now we've got our almost three points of contact there holding all this together if when you have done that you find that there's a bit of glue that has squeezed out it's helpful to to kind of scrape that off sooner rather than later because Otherwise it can be a bit of a pain to trim it off when you're painting. So I'm just going to neaten up those with a bit of uh, metal I trimmed off a piece. This propeller mounts directly to the back of the engine. This is the powered part of the gyrocopter. Unlike a helicopter, the main rotor blades are unpowered. <laughs> This piece wedges between the body and this lower casing from the engine. This is what the flight stand will mount into. So. 
Right, the skids I'm going to leave till later. I might even pin those, to be honest, because these are very small points for them to locate. So, set those aside for now. On to the biggest pain of all, the rotor. Reason being, these are such small mounting points that they are going to be an enormous pain to pin. The metal here is so thin that there's nothing really that a pin is going to grab onto. It's just going to damage the kind of integrity of this piece and get in the way of where it needs to mount onto here, which I don't want to do. So it is going to be a case of generous amounts of super glue and uh, thoughts and prayers to try and hold them together. So we will see how that goes. <laughs> The longer part of the mounting lug on here is meant to be pointing downwards, I believe. If you line it up with this one where you can see the gap at the top. And now I just need to find a way of holding them in place while the glue dries. So. Possibly using the base. I think that will be one way of doing it. Depending on how this holds together, some solutions I've seen is just to replace this rotor piece completely with one from another gyro kit. Um, there is an earlier metal model which had only a, a two-piece rotor, which doesn't look too out of scale for the body. Um, so after some field testing with this, we'll see how it goes. So quick update. The rotor has not worked the first time. Not enough glue on there. So as soon as I started to lift it, one of these fell off and then the other. So I've gone back in with my uh, paper clip and super glue and applied it this time to the ends of the rotors instead of the mounting pin itself so that we get a bit more coverage around the sides. And I've been a bit more generous with the glue. So if we zoom in, you should be able to see residue from the glue is now much more thick around these areas here. And once that has dried completely, we'll then try again. Uh, had some success with the body though. So everything that I've fixed together and pinned here is holding completely under its own strength. Here's the flying stand which I've assembled with the smaller configuration rather than the longer stem here because I don't trust it to be that high I don't think. And I'm going to glue this onto a 50 by 50 base and I will then sculpt terrain around it using cork and glues and things like that. So for this, plastic on plastic fortunately, we don't have to worry with super glue or pins or anything of the sort. Place that somewhat centrally, and that should be secure. And we can safely mount this like so. Moment of truth. A couple of hours later, and we have a completed rotor. The extra glue that I added around the sides does seem to have supported that quite well. I'm not going to tempt fate by kind of testing the strength of it, but that does hold under the weight of one of them. So, with this on the flight stand, like so, and this on top, we have a relatively sound gyrocopter. So our last part is going to be adding the skids, which I think, with how well everything else has gone, I will risk and just pin those on to make it easier, I think, to paint everything as one. I will cut in at this point to say that because the original mounting method for these is to use these 
very modest kind of dimples on here, um, mounting into similarly shallow grooves on the, the base of the engine. It does make it very hard to drill into these unless you completely file it flat. So I've had to kind of take the risk and file that off to then mount a pin in here. <laughs> With a smaller pin like this, I would advise just applying the glue directly to the end of it, rather than trying to place it on the, the surface it's going to go into. So, I'll mount one like this, and just apply some pressure to make sure it's seated properly in the skid. You can see this is obviously too long at the moment to go into the body properly, but we can always trim that down ever so slightly with the clippers once the glue is dried. These are identical on both sides, so there isn't a, sp a specific left and right skid as far as I can tell. So I'm just going to mount those on there. So with the weight of the gyro sitting on top of these skids, that should be enough just to make sure that it stays in position as the glue dries. You'll see I've created a rather precarious arrangement on this end with files and bases and so on just to keep the tail elevated because this is so heavy that it's going to tip the model this way and everything go out of line otherwise. So another long process of waiting while this glue dries. And I will in fact go one step further still and glue the steam gun on, I think just so that it is only the driver who's left. So, with some more super glue on that. This has a fairly large surface for it to mount onto, which gives me the confidence to put it on now. Skids are dry and seem to be holding on relatively well also, so I will take the final risk, I guess, and glue the rotor as well. For a last useful tip, hopefully. The rotor can be a little bit wobbly, but doesn't seem to have the same weight all the way around. So it's helpful to rotate it until you find a balancing point where it's not going to be working against the glue, but supporting itself, which in my case is there. The only remaining parts at this stage are, of course, the pilot and his right arm, which I'll be gluing together and adding in once I've painted most of the rest of the body. But that will all come in a future video, given how long it's been since I last uploaded, what with Year 11 coursework and Ofsted inspections to contend with this term. Finally through to Easter, though, so hopefully a bit more progress you'll see on the channel soon. All in all, Relatively painless experience. I was expecting a lot more grief from the rotor, so have confidence in your antiquated metal figures, and good luck with any hobbying you're up to. Until next time. <laughs>